everyone. It's, um, I hope you're ready for the webinar and I will uh, start by sharing my screen um, to you all and let me know when you can see my screen. Um, and Jackie, are you, are you here? Um, She's maybe muted. Yes, you are. Well, and I can see your screen, Thomas. Yes. Good. Um, Jackie? Yes. How are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. Hi so I will. Uh, hi there. Hi, uh, Jackie. I will start with your uh, with your slides and your presentation. So welcome everyone to this webinar. Please note that uh, this webinar is um, being recorded for your uh, for your reference then, um, and uh, and the recording will be uploaded to YouTube and you will be able to download it or watch. it on YouTube if you're a member or a supporting member of the EATG. Um, and in order not to waste any more time, Jackie, why don't you go ahead with your presentation, please? Thank you, Vert Thomas. Could you just put me on to the mind name, which is the first slide of my presentation, please? <clears throat> which yes. says, welcome to the EATG webinar on the review of governance. My name is Jackie Morton and I'm the chair of European AIDS Treatment Group. The purpose of this webinar is to inform members of the ATG on the progress of the review of the governance following the General Assembly in September 2016 and seek your views on the next steps. There are pre three presenters on this webinar, myself on behalf of, of the Board of Directors, Coombe Block, who is the Executive Director of the ATG, and Caroline Oliver, an independent consultant appointed by the Board to lead the review of governance. Tamas will be our administrator for the webinar and guide you through the procedure and he will ensure we collect all your comments and questions and provide access to the slides and follow up access to our presentations. And if you have any questions you would like to ask, please do so at the end of Caroline's presentation. So the next slide, slide please. During my presentation, <clears throat> I will pro provide an overview of the reasons as to why the Board of Directors decided to review the governance process, the progress to date, and talk through the impact on the Board. Next slide, please. So why did the Board start the review? Well, during 2014-15, there had been a high turnover of staff employed within the office, making it a difficult time for the operational continuity of many projects to achieve the objectives of the new strategy. At the same time, there was an increasing workload and demand on the organisation within the three pillars of the EATG to implement this new strategy, that is policy, scientific and research, and the new training and capacity working group. Furthermore, there are other portfolios that stood outside of the working group, such as the prevention prep portfolio, TB, hepatitis, and leading member representation on partnership organisation of projects where the board became a key communication channel for any decisions relating to these thematic areas. At the same time, new members joined the board and found the whole process confusing on where decisions were being made and how. And the development members advisory group, DMAG, was highlighting the need to amend outdated guidelines and constitution. We had a governance meeting on the 9th of May 2016 with the working group chairs, staff and board of directors, where the executive director raised his concerns on the lack of clarity on decision making within the EATG, emphasising it was unclear where decisions were being made and where and members sought clarity of what decisions were being made and where. And a proposal pre presented at this meeting outlined a potential restructure needed to clarify decision making within the organisation. Next slide please. Following this governance meeting, the board tasked a small working group consisting of myself as the chair, Kuhn Block as the executive director, Marie McCloy as the finance manager and Brian Tashira, the policy working group chair at the time, to analyse the delegation of authority within the EATG. This was presented to the GA in 2016 to clarify the scheme of delegation and gained agreement from members to continue to review the pro governance processes of the ATG. So in October 2016, straight after the GA, the board decided this work needed an expert in the development of governance and appointed Caroline Oliver, who is the chief executive of Good to Govern and an independent consultant. 
who will support the board through this review. We will give you her connection to her website so you can see her uh, credentials. Caroline has undertaken a survey of the board, staff and working group chairs during October 2000 uh, and November 2016 and the member survey in January 2017, the re results of which are being presented today. A governance steering committee has been set up. The members of this group initially made up of myself, Sanya Ballet Kruger, who is secretary to the board and liaison to DMAG, Kuhn Block, um, Marianne Vicent, who is a member, of, a member of staff, Damien Kelly, who has a working group chair, Jens Willemsborg, as internal auditor, Ferenc Aginjenski, um, DMAG, and Matthias Wienold, who is an expert in German law, a founder member and also a continuing member of EATG. As a result of today's webinar, we will be seeking two of the members of the EATG to join this task group and a call to members will follow shortly. Next slide, please. I would like to finish by briefly just providing an overview of the impact of the current governance on the board. It is the board's role to ensure delivery against the organization's strategy, its vision, mission and achievement of goals. However, there are many goals in the EATG's long-term strategy and this has led to confusion at all levels on where the organization should focus its efforts, leading to ineffective use of resources, time and efforts and inefficiency. Boundaries have not always been clear between members, the board and staff, leading to confusion who should make the decisions and control of decisions has been based through understanding of individual members and not necessarily through a collective and clear structure. The impact has resulted in members referring many aspects of business and operational management issues to the board for approval when it has not always been necessary. From the current survey of members, the three key aspects that would improve processes are summarised as followed. Clarity on the boundaries between the roles of members, staff and working groups and the board. Transparency of decision making and more direct communication of those decisions from the board. And the board to lead on the strategic direction of the organisation and have less micromanagement of the organisation. Thank you. That ends my introduction to this webinar. I will now hand over to Kuhn Block, Executive Director, who will take you through the current structure and key documents that guide our performance as an organisation. Thank you. Thank you, Tricky. Can I please kindly ask? Uh, can I please kindly ask anyone who's uh, who has not muted their microphone to please do so because uh, there's a there's a weird noise coming through. Um, and Kuhn, you take it away, I will find your presentation uh, or document rather in a minute. Is this the one that you wanted to present, right? Yes, 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 that's the one. Okay, um, so go ahead, Kuhn. Okay, so just also maybe for the people listening to us, so um, it's not that we will just be talking and there can't be any reaction, but we want to keep uh, reactions, uh, I think, after um, the presentation so that you understand. Um, so, um, what I would like to highlight is, and, and I, I'm going to try to show um, visually um, how the organization works. And um, as you can see in this um, drawing or uh, organigram, from a theoretical point of view, I think our delegation of authority, the place where decisions are being taken, is rather clear. Um, like in any organization, we have a general assembly that elects a board of directors. They delegate some of their powers to the executive director, who then needs to make sure that the plans get implemented um, with some staff. And then you have the, the, the collaboration with working groups, working group chairs. However, um, and maybe Tamash, if you could scroll down to the second one, to the okay. second page, the reality is already a bit more complex because we do have um, started throughout um, the years the the the, start, um, the the installation of thematic portfolios. We have projects. We started working more on a transversal way. 
um, we started including different people. We had an increase of staff, and um, which makes the picture already a bit more complex. And then when you go to the third one, if you scroll down, um, actually what is the, um, presented in the official way is even more complex as well because not only um, do we have these uh, thematic portfolios projects, we also started involving more contractees for specific tasks. We have representatives um, in different steering committees on different topics. We have portfolio leads. We have um, uh, steering committees. We have advisory committees. And so actually what made, uh, what became very clear to people working in the office is that um, nothing was clear anymore. Um, so people felt like, who's actually taking decisions. Um, if we have a project lead on a project on hepatitis, is it the project lead that takes a decision? Is it the project manager that takes a decision? Is it the, 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 the policy chair, the, the ECAP chair? Is it staff? Is it the hepatitis portfolio lead? Um, so things became quite confusing, creating, as we felt, frustration at sight of the contractees, of the consultants, also within the staff itself. There was a general feeling also of, of um, staff um, serving many masters uh, in a certain way because lots of people would tell them what they want them to do. Um, we felt that processes were going on quite long. Um, that financially there was no centralized uh, coordination of budgets. Um, and we also saw that, for example, priorities that were uh, agreed upon were being changed uh, throughout the process. Um, and I think this was, um, as mentioned by, by Jackie in her introduction, one of the, the, the reasons why, why we started discussing um, the issue and where we clearly asked to, to identify better what the structure is, who takes decisions, uh, what is people's role in the whole process. Um, also to, to be able to develop better terms of reference for all the people who are collaborating with us. Um, because as you can see in these yellow lines, there's lots of communication going directly towards staff and, and we felt that there should be some filtering at least in order to be able to, um, to, to make sure that whatever is happening is done within the framework of an agreed work plan, within the framework of an agreed budget, uh, within the framework of agreed priorities and strategy within the organization. And with the inclusion, of course, of the membership, the membership who is driving this organization. So we felt that we needed to find a good balance between um, the communication, the delegation of tasks, the implementation, and the involvement of members. And staff needs to have a clear coordinating role in that. Um, but also have um, more clarity about um, who takes charge of things and, um, and who's the final responsible as well. Um, for staff to be able to implement their work, uh, we have of course Belgian work rules that need to be respected, meaning that I need to tell them to stick within their 38 hours as, as uh, agreed within the contract. They, they are entitled to holidays, they are entitled to compensation. Um, at the same time, they also need to take into account other documents like our operating guidelines, which are for the membership, but at the same time, they are really saying how the membership works in collaboration with staff. So that's already also a balance they need to find and I need to find on, on, on uh, respecting and, and uh, taking into account both documents. Then we have, of course, the Constitution as well, which uh, clearly highlights um, the, the, our mission, our, um, uh, our processes, the place of the General Assembly. So whatever this process of delegation of authority is doing, it should be, first of all, respecting these documents, the mission, the, the, the Constitution, the operating guidelines, but it should also, um, um, and, and therefore the role of the membership, but it should also facilitate the work and make things a bit 
more efficient, more transparent, um, and more rewarding, I think, for the people who are involved. So that would be my uh, introduction, and then I uh, would like to invite Caroline to uh, update the people listening on, on where we are in this process, what the key ideas are, and, and, and where things are going to go to. Uh, thank, you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kuhn. Uh, thank you very much. Caroline, which which presentation would you like to start with? Is it the survey results or yes, uh, the survey pieces? results? Please tell us. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, here we go. Just let me know when when I need to add. Okay, we're going to move through this fairly fast, just so you all know. Um, so hello, everyone. Hi. Um, really uh, uh, nice to be with you all, albeit virtually. And um, I um. I've just, I'm just hot foot back from um, six days in Quebec City working on a forthcoming new international standard on governance um, and it was marvelous to be talking about governance there with uh, people from all around the world. Um, I have worked with uh, boards outside of the UK in, um, in various countries and I'm aware that uh, uh, the way that things are organized under German law uh, are, are not the same as in the, the UK and I know this experience of working with you is going to teach me an awful lot more um, about that uh, but I very much welcome the opportunity and, and, and something I'd just like to say at the beginning here is that I, you know, you are in a sense all of this where you are now is um, is actually a sign of success, uh, success at engaging people, um, success in growing your organization from nothing um, to this state where there's all these people involved and all this enthusiasm and hard work going on and results being produced. Um, and so what we're talking about now is um, that, that, that you have evolved to a state where the systems that you have been using in your um, uh, in the past, because you are now a different organisation than the one you began with, you've succeeded in doing that. Um, it makes absolute sense that uh, you might need to review um, what has been working for you in the past when you were a, a, a smaller, less mature organisation. Um, into systems that and, 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 and approaches that work for you um, in the in, in the larger and more complex organisation that you have become. Um, so the board, when I started work with the board, um, as Jackie mentioned, um, there had already been a discussion at the general assembly um, and general uh, support for the idea that yes, the time had come. Uh, to do a bit of a review of your um, governance processes, and um, but the but the uh, but there was a, a feeling among the uh, uh, the board um, and the working group that we wanted to do more outreach before starting work with members, uh, well with board, with working group chairs, with all those with the staff uh, and 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 people involved in the uh, in the leadership as well as with the members themselves and you have been sent with the papers for this meeting the full results of those surveys and I am not going to therefore in, I'm going to really skip over this stuff so please know you have this information you can look at the detail that lies behind behind this um, but I just thought it would be useful just to perhaps just skip over this just so that 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 uh, to sort of represents ourselves so to speak to the uh, to the results of these uh, surveys. So, uh, Tamas, if we could go to the next slide, please. Yep. Uh, and the next, sorry. This one. Uh, so, the, this was the board survey. This was the questions to the board, um, and we asked them if they were how satisfied they were that EATG was seeking to achieve the right thing. And we can see that uh, with ten being the most satisfied, uh, and you can see that. Um, people uh, were definitely erring on the side of being reasonably satisfied that EATG is seeking to achieve the right thing. Not to say it couldn't be further clarified, but um, it's pointing in the right direction. Thank you. 
the next one. Um, so satisfaction among board members that current governance arrangements are suited to maximizing the achievement of EATG's goals. And um, it was a little bit more a little bit more mixed on that, um, but um, still uh, reasonably positive. Moving on. Um, mainly agreed, board members were mainly agreed that the powers, members' powers in the constitution were about right, but there were a couple of board members who thought they were uh, uh, they were rather over much. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, and in terms of members' powers and the operating guidelines for terms of reference, um, it was seen to be uh, uh, about right by three board members and uh, slightly too great by two and not enough by one. Moving on. I have already advanced. This is the next one. Oh, sorry. Go ahead again then. I've got a duplicate in there. Uh, clarity about the role in governance and what they are personally accountable for. Um, ranged from, um, so this is board members talking about their own role in governance and what they're personally accountable for. And that ranged from um, 5 to 10, to 10, where they were, with 10 being completely clear. Moving on. Uh, and clarity, that, so the first one was about their individual sense. But when it came to the whole board's role in governance and what they were account the whole board was accountable for, they were slightly less clear. So slightly less clear about the whole board's role. Moving on. Um, clarity about the ED's role and oh, Rolly, sorry, role and what the ED is accountable for. Three scored seven, um, and two were higher, and one was. Um, um, was was lower, so seven was sort of around the average. Moving on, uh, working group liaisons. There was slightly less clarity about them and their roles. Let's move on. And working group chairs. Well, there was more clarity about working group chairs' role than there was about uh, about the uh, liaisons' role. Um, and there was. Um, uh, sorry, yes, moving on. Productivity of board meetings. Um, may, most people said six, and some people said lower than that, four. So wasn't very high opinion, I think one could say, of the productivity of board meetings from board members themselves. Moving on. Uh, and then there was, uh, and I'm not going to go through all this, but there was three things that could most help the board um, and so there was a lot of uh, talk about uh, 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 the need for the need for clarity the need for focus the need for knowing what truly is a matter for the board and what you know what the board should and should not be spending its time on given that it cannot spend its time on everything um, and uh, uh, so so you know more clarity more structure uh, moving on um, more clarity of roles, um, and in terms of the things that could help the ED, um, there's clearly an awareness that the, that the staff have got uh, an awful lot on their pl plates, um, and that again, clarity of roles and responsibilities and authorities could really help make their jobs uh, easier, as well as um, uh, more resource. And better communication with the with the board and others involved. Moving on, uh, and then there were um, other um, comments that were um, broad question that was asked, which Jackie basically summed up in her introduction and um, what the overall feeling coming out of these these broader questions uh, uh, was. Moving on, and now we come on to the staff and working group chairs survey. Um, Moving on. So, again, the staff, like the board, were reasonably uh, satisfied that the ATG is moving in the right direction. It's pointing in the right direction. Moving on. Um, it was they were more mixed than the board about whether the current governance arrangements are suited to maximising the achievement of its goals. 
and I think from uh, when you were listening to Kuhn, you would have heard a lot of the reasons why that might be so. Moving on. Um, they were mainly agreed that the members' powers in the Constitution were about right. Moving on. Uh, but the extent of members' powers in the operating guidelines in terms of reference were seen as slightly too great. Moving on. Um, there was a mixed response about the whole board's the, about clarity about the, their clarity about the whole board's role in governance and what it's uh, accountable for. You can see there's quite a lot of uh, scores under. Uh, uh, six and under there. Moving on. Uh, clarity about the ED's role and accountability was slightly better. Moving on. Um, clarity about other staff's role and accountability was about the same as it was for the ED. Moving on. Uh, clarity about the working group liaison's role and accountability was again more confused. More confusion there. Moving on. And clarity about the working group chair's role and accountability uh, was a bit clearer. Moving on. And they were leaning slightly more to the board, the seeing board meetings as being unproductive than productive. Moving on. And uh, three things that could most help the board. Again, I'm not going to go into detail in this, it's sort of summed up by Jackie in her uh, opening remarks there, uh, clearer strategic vision, uh, established, clearly established delegation of authority, so um, focus again, the word focus, so focus, clarity, um, especially around delegation of authority and strategic vision and guidance, moving on. Um, uh, clear terms of reference, Moving on, three things that could uh, most help the ED, um, again clarity between the board's role and the, the ED's role, um, talk of um, office manager and more, more resources uh, needed, uh, complete review and revision of the terms of reference of job description, uh, and uh, more on that, carrying on. Um, so there was a lot to say there. <laughs> uh, moving on. Uh, help, three things that could help most help other staff. Um, clear clarity again, clarity of mandate from the ED. So now we're talking from the ED to other staff. And obviously, if the EDs, if there's not a lot of clarity around the EDs role, that's gonna that's gonna um, carry over into uh, lack of clarity around other staff's role. Um, office manager mentioned again, clear decision making, delegation of authority. Moving on. Uh, effective supervision, fully understanding roles. Review and eventual, re eventual revision of the terms of reference, clear guidance on decision making, a leaner structure. So, uh, yeah, clearer, clearer structure, clearer, leaner structure. Moving on. Uh, and again, there's a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of uh, individual comments. Uh, just that this was a free for all, allowing people to say just whatever they wanted about anything to do with the, to do with the EATG's governance. Moving on, moving on. All of this, all of this detail is going to be taken into account uh, in the review. Um, so we will be revisiting all of this as part of the review. Uh, okay, moving on. And now we come to the members survey. Um, so, uh, so in this survey. Um, what you've got is that um, you've got a scale of uh, zero to ten, uh, and so it's just shown in a slightly different way than the than the uh, than the uh, previous survey. So um, this was a survey monkey thing. 
Um, and again, you've got the detail in the papers that were given out at this meeting. Um, so um, again, feeling that, uh, uh, that, that this score, sorry, though this shows one to 10, actually the range that people were given was one to five. So you need to bear this in mind all the way through. So the fact that the average score here is almost five is a very high score because uh, you could ignore everything after five um, uh, in, in the chart because we, the, the, the scoring we gave them, options we gave them were one to five. Uh, thank you. So on to the next one. Um, so uh, this is about uh, awareness of constitutional powers and you can see uh, that uh, uh, Oh, no, uh, yes, yeah, so, sorry, this is one to seven. Um, so one to seven on the score of one to seven, they scored this just about five. So um, fairly highly rate their, their awareness of their constitutional powers. Carrying on. Um, and um, satisfied faction with constitutional decision making powers. There was um, pretty high uh, satisfaction there. Carrying on. Um, uh, so there was, uh, so again this was one to seven, I apologize, not one to five, one to seven, um, and uh, so they scored just above four. So um, I think you could say that uh, people felt uh, largely that the, that the powers and the operating guidelines were about right. Moving on. Um, similarly, with the satisfaction with the, the relationship between the General Assembly and the Board. Um, just slightly uh, uh, above the median. Um, moving on. Um, slightly less happy with the uh, clarity of the member's role and accountability. Moving on, and similarly, a uh, similar kind of level of um, fairly low in terms of the satisfaction with the relationship between the board and the staff. Moving on, uh, so uh, scored just above four on a scale of one to seven about um, clarity of the board's role. Moving on, similar for the ED's role, moving on, similar for the working chairs group, working group chairs roles, just over four on a scale of one to seven, moving on, um, slightly higher um, sense of understanding of what the staff's role is, but uh, just under five out on a scale of one to seven. Moving on. Um, and then we asked people who they were just to just to see. Um, and so you can see the spread of the uh, of the, the the roles that people were playing outside. In addition to being just a, a member of EATG. Moving on. And uh, you can see which advisory working groups or advisory groups the respondents were members of. Moving on, and that's uh, that's that. Okay, so that's the, that completes a very uh, quick skip through the um, through the results. Now we're moving on um, to the next slide presentation, which shows you um, broadly where we are planning to head. Uh, and, and this is um, uh, work being done by myself and the governance um, task group that Jackie um, talked about the membership of earlier, and that we're looking for another couple of members to uh, uh, to join in. And so this will just show you where we're at to date, and then I'm going to allow as much time, this won't, won't take long, as much time as possible for discussion. Um, so, um, so um, moving on, um, Tamas. 
So this is the, the diagram you've already seen, actually it's a sim simpler version of the one you've already seen that Kuhn did. So this is the current. Moving on. Uh, these are the project values we've come up with for this governance review. Uh, that the project should at all times, this governance review should at all times be conducted with the following aim, that with the support of EATG's membership, the EATG's board of director establishes legitimate and visionary leadership, clarity of governing and managerial relationships, effective oversight, adequate support structures for sustainability and greatest possible economy. Uh, the second uh, project value is that members should have opportunities to be informed about and give input to work and that's what we're doing today and this is uh, uh, you know we've had this we've had the, the general assembly we've had the surveys now we've got this webinar and there will be more as you will see and then staff should have the opportunity to be informed about and give input to this review so those are the project values which we will reference at every single meeting we have Moving on so uh, we're starting from very very high level principles and the first of those principles is that the members of EATG are its first and last authority, i.e. they are the initiators, the members are the initiators uh, um, of the, the entire organization and what it's about and the definers of what it's for. Um, and they are also the last authority in the sense that at the end of the day, when everybody else has gone home, uh, the members are still standing, so to speak. So they are also the, 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 the ultimate uh, accountability of... EATG in the world, um, and the members are um, owners of, the equivalent of owners of EATG. Uh, and so, uh, but the trouble is that um, they need to delegate to get things done. Um, and But this is the first principle, is that the members are the first and the last authority. Moving on. Uh, now, the board is that first link in the chain of accountability between the EATG members as owners of EATG and um, the, the organization, the operating organization of EATG. Um, they are appointed and elected by EATG's members to ensure that EATG fulfills its purpose. Um, but again, as the organization grows and becomes more po complex, this board needs to, in its turn, employ staff and others to get things done. Moving on. So the next link in this chain of accountability from the organization back to the owners, this, this two-way street uh, between, uh, with, with the, uh, with the uh, EATG members as owners as the ultimate authority, um, is the executive director. So the board usually uh, allows their, ET, their executive director to be responsible for the employment of all further staff, and which ensures that the executive director can be held fully accountable for everything that goes on in the organization. Uh, because if the board does not delegate in this way, it ends up in effect being the executive director because it ends up being the only level at which everything comes together. Um, and um, so it's very, very difficult to hold um, several people um, um, accountable for the same thing. And so to get that, 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 that very straightforward accountability for the operating organization of EATG as a whole, uh, the boards typically delegate through uh, uh, one person. Um, and of course, if the board actually takes direct responsibility for hiring other staff, um, it basically ends its capacity to hold the executive director for what happens because it wasn't the executive director who put those people in place. Uh, next slide. So again, we're talking at the level of principle here. Um, so members, in their capacity as owners of EATG, hire and fire the board and they hold the board accountable for the operation of EATG, and they set the rules for membership, who can and can't be a member, what, what, um, you know, if they, uh, what, what codes of conduct or whatever you have to have to be a member, and the rules for delegation to the board. Then the board hires and fires the ED, holds the ED accountable for the operation of EATG, and sets rules for the delegation, for delegation to the ED. 
and then the ED hires and fires the staff and holds the staff accountable for the operation of ETG, the ATG, and sets rules for delegation to staff. Um, so that's a kind of overall sort of map, a very high-level map of where we're headed. Moving on. Um, now, this looks slightly different um, um, to the documents that you have at the moment, and I'm going to just explain um, how this fits together. So German law, obviously, is the highest um, level of documentation, and that belongs to the society under which you are co incorporated, i.e. Uh, Germany, the people of Germany through the government. Uh, within that, you are given a license to operate by, the, by that uh, state, and, the mem and when I say you, I mean the members as owners, um, and you create uh, and all sign up to EATG's constitution. And that document is owned by the members. It cannot be changed without uh, the owner's consent, and it cannot, and, 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 um, uh, and very often the certain matters will also need to be referred to the German, uh, German state in order to be uh, changed. But it is basically, fundamentally, it is, the, it is a document that belongs not to the board, not to the ED, not to any of the working groups. It belongs to the members as owners. Um, now, at the moment, you also have um, uh, what you call um, uh, operating guidelines and terms of reference. And what we will find as you look at those is that they are a bit of a mixture. Uh, in terms of um, the extent to which they are the 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 the, the members' uh, rules for owners versus the members' rules for the board versus the members' rules for uh, the uh, for the ED and staff. Um, and so one of the things we're going to be looking at, and this is we're sort of moving towards this stage now, is reviewing the documents to make sure there is clarity about what is owned in your documents by the members, what is owned under the owner's direction by the board, and what is owned under the star, uh, under the ED's uh, uh, direction uh, uh, by, the, uh, by, the, by, the, by the ED. Moving on. So, uh, looking um, sort of down the pipe, uh, in terms of broad principle, uh, where, are we, where are we headed? Who will be directly accountable to the General Assembly for what? So the board being, uh, will be accountable for the operation of EATG, be accountable to the General Assembly for the operation of EATG within German law and the Constitution. Uh, the Development Manage Membership Advisory Group will be accountable to the General Assembly for the implementation of uh, their membership rules um, within an annually agreed budget of staff time and funds so that they have some support to do their work on behalf of the General Assembly. Uh, and the Ombudsman provide this independent verification of the adequacy of the handling of um, internal complaints within um, relevant General Assembly policies. Moving on, which are in the Constitution. Moving on. So who will be directly accountable to the board for what? Sorry, can you just go back one? Yes, uh, the external auditors, uh, the internal auditors, the external advisory board, and the executive director. Moving on. And who will be directly accountable to the ED, the working group members and chairs, the staff and consultants, and the volunteers, whether they're portfolio leaders, consultants, thematic consultants, coordinators, or any other title. Um, uh, but everything that the ED does uh, uh, has to be done um, within the policy which has been set by the board, which has to be done within the uh, everything set out in the constitution uh, by the ultimate uh, owners, the members. Moving on. So what this means is that as a member, you are likely to have a number of hats. 
In one hat, you are the owner of the EATG, and you steer EATG through the constitution and your membership of the General Assembly, where you have a vote. So when you are at the General Assembly, you are an owner of acting as an owner of EATG. You also, as a member, um, are uh, often playing volunteer roles, um, and in those in that hat. You are not operating as part of the General Assembly. You are not operating as an owner. You are operating as a volunteer to assist the work of the ED, ED in fulfilling EATG's board's policy, which has been created uh, in relation to the owner's policies. And um, if you're consultants, you can also be a consultant, uh, paid and unpaid. And if you're, when, if you're a consultant, paid or unpaid, and you are not being an owner of AATG while you're fulfilling that role, that is uh, uh, quite different uh, from the fact that you are now adv an advisor uh, to EATG uh, as a, a, either as a volunteer or on a paid contract, uh, again, assisting the ED with fulfillment of the EATG board's policy. And of course, the ED can you know, delegate somebody to be the person who does the day-to-day -day interaction with you as a consultant or as a volunteer. It doesn't mean that he or she is necessarily personally uh, doing this, but they are accountable for the fact that it is being done and it is being done properly. Moving on. So uh, in this scenario, uh, we believe that uh, board liaisons will no longer be needed. Moving on. Uh, the project plan looks like this. Uh, so mid-April, uh, we produced the, uh, the beginnings of this infographic. You're seeing on these slides, we're having the first member consultation now. Uh, Mid-June, we're going to get the first draft documentation. End of June, second draft. Then we're going to have a legal review. Uh, there will be a second uh, member consultation with that documentation. Um, and say so we're hoping more of you will enjoy, uh, join us in the group that's working through this whole plan. Uh, webinar, uh, another webinar, questionnaire, uh, and then there will be preparation of proposals for the General Assembly. So that's, that's it. So we're now open for questions to Jackie, Kuhn, or myself. And thank you so much for your uh, attention. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Caroline, very much. And um, I open the floor, please. Uh, if you would like to ask a question, then uh, indicate this in um, in the chat box or um, or in the questions section. Uh, and in the meantime, while this is happening, I would like to um, ask uh, Kuhn or Jackie um, about what uh, what the board thinks uh, in in addition to this project plan. What what is the next Tangible step that that the membership will see coming out of this uh, out of this project. Will we send out uh, these documents? Um, and so, what? How how do you how do you plan to proceed now? Um, from my perspective, from the board, we certainly want to be as open and as transparent as possible. So when Caroline pre presents the first draft documentation, clearly it will be. The, discussed with the executive director and the board and uh, hopefully as soon as we've um, reviewed the work send it out as soon as possible so people can have any views and comments on any of the work that Caroline is pulling together so that we can um, ensure that members have as much chance to raise questions or comment on anything. Within the steering group we've tried to include people who have expertise through their own position within perhaps the working group or within the organization but also as we're looking for two more members to join within the membership who can actually uh, link and communicate across the organization so that it's um, fair and transparent. I <clears throat> Thank you, thank you uh, Jackie for that. Uh, I understand that Giorgio um, has um, no, Julio has a question, I'm sorry. Um, Julio, shall I unmute you? Um, I unmute you, and then you can ask a question directly. Um, are you there? 
Okay, thank you, Tomas. Yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, I, the, the general impression is that uh, there is a, a lot of, of, of roles or of functions on the executive director. For example, you said that the working group chairs should be accountable directly to to him, to the executive director. Uh, while so far we have uh, this role for the uh, officers. Um, at, uh, at the office in the staff, uh, the scientific officer for ECAB and policy officer for the PWG. Well, how will, will, will this be arranged? What is the role of the officers? Yes, so, so um, uh, the executive director, he or she, would always be uh, able to delegate their authority to somebody else to exercise. So, uh, but the crucial thing is that they remain accountable for whatever they have delegated. So they can delegate it, but they have to be accountable back to the people from whom they got their authority for the for 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 that 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 uh, that delegation. So it doesn't mean at all. That the executive director, and thank you, it was a very good question to pick up on. Uh, it doesn't mean at all that, the, that whilst, in the same way that whilst the board is accountable for everything, it isn't doing anything, it'd be exactly the same with the executive director. Whilst the executive director will be accountable for everything that's been delegated to him or her by the board, uh, they, in their turn, will be able to delegate to uh, people who, as to be their representative in dealing with this group or that project or that plan or whatever it is. I have another question from uh, from uh, Nyambe. Uh, Nyambe, do you want me to unmute you? I will. I try to find you here on the list. I can unmute you, and then you can ask your question directly. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Okay. Yeah, I posted my question, but uh, I can repeat it or explain why. I've um, because I noticed um, during the presentations that there was an emphasis on the members' exercise of their powers during the GA, uh, for example, in electing members of the board. Uh, my question was, I mean, do these powers start and end at the GA? What happens if mid-year they're not happy about the fundamental issue or some of the delegations of authority? Yes, in, in your constitution, uh, sets out all the rules, including those rules as to uh, how many members agreement you need to have in order to call a special uh, general assembly. So there is a routine general assembly, but there is always a clause or clauses that say that the members uh, as owners have the power as long as they have X number of, 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 of X proportion of the membership backing them. Uh, to call a special meeting. So that's the way that uh, you always have that fail safe that a meeting can in fact be called at any time. Um, again, according to the rules in the constitution which are set by the members. Is, is that the uh, only way? You. Has that happened before? Yeah, yes, it has. We've had instances when uh, when we had uh, extraordinary general meeting, which was necessary because of um, because of various reasons. Uh, but but there's uh, there are examples for this in the history of the ATG. I have another question from uh, from Ben from Ben Collins, and he asked me to read it out for him. So the question reads. From past experience, I've seen this transition to further clarity of roles amongst boards, ED staff, and members can be confusing. What kind of support is in place for this transition? And he's mostly concerned, I mean, Ben is mostly concerned about support for Kuhn, the executive director. So what is the status of the new hire and the title? So there I can say that today we had uh, interviews with uh, four candidates. Um, the, the, so there will be a new position with the title of um, executive assistant. It's a person that will be 
strongly supporting um, the HR part of my job, um, but also the, the financial part uh, in collaboration with Marie. Um, we need to discuss if we want to go for a second round, for example, um, or if we decide. And then starting of the position would be as soon as possible, also depending on the person's um, availability. But luckily, and well, probably unluckily as well, we had strong candidates. Um, so um, with uh, with um, each of them, um, good skills. So we have the luxury of of, um, of choosing. Uh, so that's uh, that's the good point uh, about it. So I, I must say I'm, I'm happy that this goes together with this process because indeed, um, and I appreciate the worry uh, from Ben. Um, I do think that there was a strong need of, um, of um, getting some support because um, it became rather challenging to deal with things, which was also expressed uh, in, a, in a previous comment uh, from Julio. So um, uh, guiding um, us all through this process definitely requires support from several sides and this new position will definitely have a role to play in that as well. Thank you, Kuhn. Do you have any other questions, uh, anyone um, from the audience? Because uh, we still have a few minutes, but if not, then would you like um, uh, Jackie or, or uh, Caroline or Kuhn, would you like to say a couple of closing words uh, before we end this webinar? I would just like to say this is an ongoing process. We're at the start of a journey. Hopefully we're going to try and get things clear so that um, members do feel that there is a, a, a clarity around decision making, hence why Caroline has been brought into the fold. Also, as Kuhn said, we're very conscious of the impact on the staff and Kuhn himself as the executive director, and we are looking at um, how to support Kuhn through this process with the staff and looking at uh, all the roles within the organisation that are employed with Kuhn to support, to help him, to enable him to have the time to be more strategic and clearly what we want to see out of this is the board being much more strategic and doing the job that it should be doing around setting the direction of travel and looking at um, long-term strategy which is obviously starting to be looking at again next year so um, we will be uh, working closely with Kuhn and his team to do that. So I think um, we are on the journey and it's it, and we're going through the treacle at the moment of that journey but uh, hopefully we'll come out and uh, present to the General Assembly a plan of action as to see where um, decisions are clearer for everybody and there's not the confusion that there can sometimes be um, that we currently have within the organisation. Um, I want to maybe add also that, uh, I mean, this whole process, it's, it's not about us, it's not about me, it's about, I think, uh, I mean, as, as office, I, I think it is really a, a process that we should all uh, be involved in. Um, I do see it really as an empowering process, not a disempowering one. I mean, I was listening also to the comment of Niambe about um, does that mean we, we can't, for example, express also our opinion if we don't agree? Of course, members can. So I think the whole process is to clarify communication, to better um, install the, 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 the levels, the communication channels. Um, and it should be a rewarding exercise, hopefully, for everybody, where, um, where processes become clearer, where we become more efficient as an organization, but at the same time that it is really also um, empowering people in their role. And, um, and, I mean, being a member myself, this does include membership. I really hope that members can be more efficiently involved um, in our um, in our activities um, because we saw in the past uh, and especially also in some recent experience that that the way we involve them I think is not always the most efficient one I think we can do better and um, and that would make it a more rewarding experience to 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 us to them um, so this is about collaboration and not about um, bringing more 
things to one side or the other. So that will be a bit my my short comment at the end. Thank you, Kuhn. Thank you very much, and thank you, Matthias, for, Ma Matthias, for for pointing out that uh, this process was greatly wished for by the last GA. And Matthias also thanks uh, the ATG for raising the funds to do this exercise. Um, thank you, everybody, for participating in this um, in this webinar, and especially great thanks to the contributors, uh, Jackie, Kuhn, Caroline. Um, I think that this is going to be really interesting for the future. Uh, the recording of um, of the webinar will be uploaded either later today or tomorrow, the latest, and the link to the recording will be sent to you all. Thank you very much for your attention and for your patience, and see you soon. Bye. Thank you, Tamas. Thank you, Tamas. Thank you, Kun. Thank you, Caroline. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye for now.